Hey there everyone, this is Sarah and welcome to another Technique Tutorials. Today I want to share with you a really simple and classic stamping technique, which is stamping with dye-based markers. I'm going to be working with Kurotaki markers today and with Paper Artsy Eclectica stamps. So you can see here that really fun leaf design that's been stamped using not ink pads, but markers. So I'm going to stand up and turn the camera down so that we can take a look at this process. So hang in with me for a second and we're going to come down like this and you can see on here. So you can see the design that I'm working with and that I'm working with the Paper Artsy collection, which is that big, beautiful leaf. Now the stamps that I'm working with here, this is the ESN 20 stamp set. I'm going to try and hold this the right way so that you guys can see. We've got lots of nice sentiments on here and two really big, beautiful leaves. So the paper that I'm working on is a watercolor cardstock as well. So this is going to be perfect for my surface. Now the markers I'm working with are Kurataki. So these are a dye-based marker. They're a water-based marker, which means that I can use them to interact with water, unlike um, a solvent-based marker or an alcohol marker, which wouldn't interact well with water. So I'm able to do this really easily. So the three colors that I'm working with are a yellow, I've also got a may green, and I've got an olive green on here as well. So I'm gonna set aside my markers. The other thing I have on hand is a paintbrush, and I've got a spritzer bottle with some water in here too. Now, the big trick for, for my stamping is going to be my MISTI. So let me bring this in so you can see. Now, the MISTI is a stamp positioner. I've got some magnets on hand here, too. This is part of the tool. And this is going to make my stamping a lot easier. Hi, Rosalyn. Hi, Annalise. Thank you for, um, for joining me today. Nice to see your names pop up. So what I'm going to do with my MISTI, first of all, if you have worked with a MISTI before, you know there are a couple of different layers to it. So I've got a, a pad in here, and this is going to be um, for when I'm using my clear acrylic thinner stamp, so maybe like an Alta New stamp. But because my Paper Artsy stamps are a bit thicker, so you can see here we've got their foam mounted stamps, so they're thicker than a traditional um, clear acrylic stamp. So I'm just removing those two pads that were inside. And then what I can do is put my paper down on here as I would normally do, grab some of the magnets. These are really powerful magnets. So I'm gonna pop those down here. So I've got this hanging in. Now what I can do is take my stamp. I'm gonna turn this over so it's the image side down. And then I'm going to close this up and it will cling onto the opposite side. So this is how this is positioning is going to work. Now the next thing I need to do is grab my markers and I'm gonna start with the lightest color. I'm gonna start with this yellow and I'm going to color directly onto the stamp. Now the brush marker is really gonna come in handy for this. I think you can see this. Maybe I'll hold it up against here so you can see that tip a little bit more clearly. It's a nylon brush tip, which means that it's not going to have little hairs that are going to come out. It's a really pretty sturdy tip. I've used my markers quite a lot, so this does a good job of good quality markers. And I'm just going to color this directly onto my stamp. So I'm just gonna scribble this color on here. I'm not being too precise. You'll notice my stamp is a little bit stained, but that's okay. So I'm starting with the yellow, and then I'm gonna move on to the May green. And here I'm just going to kind of scuffle a little bit of color Bit more randomly on here. Now what I'm going to do is take my mister bottle and I'm going to spritz the color on here. I'm not going to flood it, but I am going to give it one quick spritz. And you can see the color is starting to run a little bit there. And then what I'll do is just close this up like so. I'm going to press this down and lift this up. And you can see I've got my watercolor effect. Now, while there's still a little bit of water on here, I'm gonna come back with my darkest color, which is the olive. And once again, just scribble some color on here, like so. And I'm not going to spritz it this time. 
but instead I'm just gonna leave it as it is and press that down on there. And then I've got my watercolor effect. And because I've been working with a textured watercolor paper, it means that I'm also able to pick up some of the watercolor effect of the background, or the textured effect of that background as well. So let me bring back in the card again and show this to you one more time so you can see. Now I've got some spattering going on in the background here. That's been done with the olive um, pen as well. So I'll show you that process just now. Let me grab off my stamped piece. And I'm working onto a craft sheet here. And I'm gonna take my olive marker and just do a little scribble on here. I'm gonna take my Mr. Bottle and give it a spritz. And then I've got a paintbrush. I'm just going to pick up some of that color and just hold this over my cardstock piece and tap. And then that way I can get a really pretty soft and subtle watercolor effect there. So once again, I'll bring back in my card. You can see it one more time. Then I've got that beautiful word reverie that's from the Emily Dickinson poem. That's what inspired me for that one. And I thought that just looked really pretty going um, across the bottom of the leaf. L looking forward to springtime I am. And I've got some twine going down the side of the card. I've got this all mounted up onto a craft cardstock. And then I've got some little pearls down here at the bottom, just as a, as a nice accent piece on here. Oh, hi, Miriam. Nice that you showed up. Thank you. Nice to see your name. So this is how easily you can use your markers with your stamps and with a little bit of water. I will say that this is a technique that you're going to get a different look every single time. So you can see even between the two of these, this one's got more yellow going on and this one has more green, a little bit blurrier too. So the amount of water you use is really going to determine the outward look and the finished look of your um, design. But I think they're all really pretty. I don't think you can really go wrong with these. Um, but I do want to offer another tip because once again, when you're working with your markers, I've got three different colors here. Now two are kind of from the same family, these two greens, and the yellow is of course quite different. What I would suggest is that you um, kind of keep it to under three rather than maybe four or five or six different colors because then you can end up with a bit of a muddy effect if you're doing it all on one single image. So other than that, I think it's a great technique and I think it is one that is a classic technique that's well worth investigating once again. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Please add in any comments down below and I will be more than happy to respond to you. So this is another technique tutorial. We're gonna be posting these here on Facebook pretty regularly, so I hope you can join me in the future. Okay, take care you guys. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.